Here are three easy ways to animate AI images in After Effects. First, we're going to hop into Midjourney on Discord and type in a prompt that's as descriptive as possible to what we have in mind. In this example, I'm thinking a mythical Pandora-like landscape with waterfalls, so I'll type slash imagine to open a prompt dialog, and then I'll type something like avatar, Pandora, mythical landscape, waterfalls, extraterrestrial, cinematic, cloudy, photorealistic, space, dash dash, AR, space, 16 by 9 for the aspect ratio, and hit enter. Midjourney will start generating us four versions of what it thinks we're looking for, and you'll more than likely need to do this process a few times with different prompts to find something that you like. Once you have it, you can hit the upscale button, and the bot will upscale the resolution for you. Next, we'll hop into After Effects and create a comp and title it Main. For this effect, we generated two plates, one for the background and one for the foreground. Then make a pre-comp for each plate, calling them Background Comp and Foreground Comp, respectively. Next, we'll go into the background comp and drag and drop in our waterfall overlay. For this, we're using a waterfall asset we got from Production Crate. Right click and go to Time and Time Stretch to slow down the speed of the clip and add frame blending to smooth it out. After that, we'll pre comp the waterfall layer and call it Waterfall. With Scale and Position, we'll place the layer over one of the waterfalls in the scene. Mask around the top of the layer and add a good amount of feathering to smooth the transition. Add a soft light blending mode to blend better with the background plate. Then you can use the curves or lumetri color effects to further tweak and color match with the plate. Next, we'll use the puppet pin tool to shape the waterfall with the waterfall in our image. You could also use the mesh warp plugin to get the same result. Mask out any obstructions that are in front of the waterfall and feather, then simply repeat the process for all other waterfalls in the scene. To add a touch more realism, we'll grab our fog layer that we also got from Production Crate and add some low forming moisture to the scene. Like the waterfall layer, scale and position the fog to your liking, mask and feather, and tweak the mask shape until satisfied. Adjust the layer opacity down and use curves for color matching if needed. Next, we'll jump into our foreground pre-comp. For this image, all we want is the rock cliff in the foreground. And for this example, we want it flipped, so right click, go to transform, flip horizontally. Grab the background pre-comp and place it under the foreground plate for composition referencing. Mask out the rock cliff and add a slight touch of feathering. About two pixels is all we need. Then scale and position to taste. For this, we wanted a bit of humanity, so I filmed myself on a green screen to comp into the scene. Grab the green screen footage and drop it into a new comp and rename it to Keyed. We don't need all this extra space since I'm not moving around in the frame. So we'll click the region of interest button, select only the area that we want to keep, then go up to composition and choose crop comp to region of interest. This will adjust the pre-comp size down to only the area that we need. Next, we'll key out the green using key light. Select an area of green close to the subject and set the view to screen matte. Adjust the clip black and clip white until the subject is pure white. In this case, the stool isn't perfectly keyed, but that's okay because we'll mask this out anyway. Set the view to intermediate result and then add key cleaner to clean the edges and advanced spill suppressor to remove any green spill. Next, add the keyed pre-comp to the foreground comp. Mask out the stool and add a touch of feathering, then scale and position on top of the cliff edge. Duplicate the foreground layer and mask around the leg and then place above the keyed layer. Then we'll add a bit of shadow to better ground the subject into the scene. In our case, we're using the Red Giant VFX Shadow plugin for a quicker result. Now, unfortunately, the images that come out of Midjourney aren't yet the best resolution, so there are some discrepancies between my camera footage sharpness and the images. We can add a touch of unsharp mask to the rock cliff layers to try and help sharpen it up, but not too much. Hopefully Midjourney images have better resolution as time goes on, but for now it's still a great tool regardless. Now we'll finally jump back into our main comp and change both the foreground and background layers to 3D layers. This will allow us to scale and position them in 3D space and to add some camera movement and parallax. Push the background back in Z space and rescale up, then scale the foreground up just a bit and position. Next, add a 3D camera layer and keyframe the position along the Z axis, as well as the focus distance and aperture to bring the foreground more into focus as the camera backs up over time. This will add a touch more realism as if it was actually filmed on a camera. To add even a bit more life to the scene, we grabbed a few bird layers from Production Crate. First, open the background comp and add one of the layers to the scene. Flip horizontally and time stretch just a little bit so the layer plays through the entire timeline. Then add frame blending. Open the foreground layer and place the second bird layer underneath. The last thing we'll add is a little bit of atmospheric lighting to tie it all together. For this, we used the Optical Flares plugin from Video Copilot. Now this is a paid plugin, so if you don't have it, this won't work for you, but it's definitely one we recommend as it comes in handy for a lot of things. Create a solid and add the Optical Flares plugin. Set the render mode to on transparent and position the light where you want it in the scene. Then click on Options. 
Here we will go into presets and find a lighting style that fits well with our scene. Real sun looks good, so we'll select and hit OK. You can adjust and customize these presets as much as you want, but for this example, this works fine as is. Change the layer into a 3D layer, adjust the position in Z space in front of all the other layers, adjust the scale and brightness of the light to taste and reposition if needed. And to finish things off, go back in and adjust the color of any layers as needed, add some overall color grading, and then hit render. To get started, we first need to generate a base image with Dolly that we can then base each next frame on. For our zoom, we wanted to begin in a puddle of water on a dirt road and then gradually zoom out into outer space. And then from there, who even knows? First, we need to type in a prompt. So we can say something like a puddle of water on dirt, top down view, photorealistic, and then hit generate. Dolly will generate four images for us to pick from. This one looks good, so let's go ahead and hit accept and download and then let's name it 001 for frame one. Next, we need to scale the image down so that we have some space around the picture. The way Dolly works is you can erase certain parts of an image and the AI will add onto those empty spaces based on the prompt that you give it. Or similarly, in our case, scale the image down and it will add on to the outer perimeter of the image. Open your image in Photoshop or a similar photo editing program. For this, I'm using Affinity Photo because I'm too poor to pay monthly for anything more than just After Effects. Next, zoom in with the Marquee tool and make a selection around the Dolly watermark and use Content Aware Fill to remove it. Then hit export and replace the image now without the watermark. Then let's rescale the image down to 30% of its original size. In this case, 30% of 1024 pixels is 307.2. So we'll type in 307.2 for the height and width and then hit enter. Export again and then this time naming it 001 underscore resized. Then we'll jump back over to Dolly and upload the newly resized image and add the next prompt. This time let's say a dirt road, top down view, photorealistic and hit generate. Repeat the process once again of saving as double 02 this time for frame 2, removing the watermark, exporting and replacing, and rescaling down to 30%. Then just keep repeating the process again and again, adding on whatever prompt you wish for each next frame until you have as many frames as you want. Once you've completed your frame generating, hop into After Effects and import all the full-sized frames. For our project, we generated 25 frames, but you may have more or less, which is fine. Grab frame 001 and drag it down to the Create New Composition button. Go to Composition Settings and name the composition frames 1 through 10 and set the duration to 10 seconds. Click OK and then drag frames 2 through 10 down into the composition. Repeat the process for frames 11 through 20 into their own comp with the same 10 second duration and again for any other frames you might have. Now jump back into the frames 1 through 10 comp and select the first frame. Hit S on the keyboard for scale and change the size to 30% to match our resizing that we did for each image. Parent the first frame to the second frame so that when the second frame resizes, the first frame is linked and scales with it. Now we can see that there is a hard edge outline of the first frame against the second with the first First frame selected, grab the rectangle tool and draw a mask inside the boundaries of the image to blend it better with the second image. Once you've done that, simply repeat the same process for each next frame, selecting frame 2, rescaling down to 30%, parenting to frame 3, drawing a mask inside the edge boundary, and so on. Do the same process in each of the other comps as well until you've completed the last frame. Once that's all done, go back to the frame 1 through 10 comp and select the last frame. Next, we'll move the playhead to the end of the timeline and add a keyframe for scale at 30%. Then we'll move the playhead to the beginning of the timeline. Since all of these layers are parented to each other in sequence, we need to zoom all the way in to the first frame. Now the reason we broke the frames up into separate comps of 10 is because the scaling value we need to zoom in that far would be way too large for After Effects to be able to handle. To figure out the exact value we need to scale up to, we need to do a little bit of math. The equation we need to use is 1 divided by 0.3 to the power of n times 100, where 1 divided by 0.3 means we're scaling each image down to 30% and then raising that to the power of however many frames we have in our comp. In this case, 11 frames because we have 10 in the comp and then we need to add an extra for it to blend well with the following comp and then multiplying the whole thing by 100 since we're working in percentages. Now, don't worry if you're bad at math. I am too and I admittedly didn't figure this one out on my own, but I figured I'd at least show you how we're coming up with this value instead of just giving you some random large number that you have no clue where it came from. When we run the calculation,
function, we come up with a value of 56,450,292.694767. So we can now see why we needed to break these comps up into chunks of 10, because otherwise that number would just totally break after effects. So with the playhead at the beginning of the timeline, change the scaling of the last layer to 56,450,292.694 and add another keyframe. Now when we play it back, we'll notice that the animation starts very slowly and only at the very end does it speed up and that's way too fast. We want this to play back in a linear fashion. So to do that, select both keyframes, right click and go to keyframe assistant and select exponential scale. Now the sequence will play back linearly. Now just repeat the process on the last layer of all the other comps. And once that's all complete, create a new comp and title it layers and change the duration to match the total length of all your comps. In this case, we have three comps at 10 seconds each, so we'll make it 30 seconds. Then select and drag your three comps into the new layers comp. Next, we need to line each sequence up with the ends of each previous sequence, so drag the playhead towards the end of the first layer, and then drag the beginning of the second layer toward the end of the first. Lower the opacity of the first layer so you can see the second, and then drag the second until the two match up perfectly. Set the opacity of the first back to 100, then repeat the process for the next layer. After that's done, drag the layers comp into a new comp and name it trim. Drag the playhead to the point where you want the animation to begin and hit B on the keyboard, then drag the playhead to the point you want the animation to finish and hit N on the keyboard. Go up to composition and select trim comp to work area. Then finally, to cap things off, turn on motion blur for all layers and render out the animation. All right, to get started, right click on your clip and go to track and stabilize and select track camera. After Effects will apply a 3D camera tracker to the layer and generate a number of tracker points that follow the camera movement of the scene in 3D space. Hover the mouse over any of these points until you find a good spot that is parallel with the surface that you're wanting to apply your image to. Select the points and then right click and choose Create Solid and Camera. Once these are created, select the solid layer, right click and select Precompose. Then open up the precomp and delete the solid. Head over to the project panel and select the image that you want to track in. These are the mural images that we created using Midjourney that we want to attach to the wall surfaces. This is just one example of an infinite number of ways that you can leverage AI to create custom elements for your scenes. You can check out our Midjourney video in the top right hand corner if you want to learn more about how to actually generate images with it. Select the image that you want to use from the project panel and take note of the resolution size. While still in the pre-comp, go to Composition and select Composition Settings. Change the pre-comp size to match the image and click OK. Then drag the image into the pre-comp and jump back into the main comp. You'll notice that the solid is now changed into the image which is now tracked onto the wall. Do some basic scaling and position adjustments until you're satisfied with the size and the placement. Select Soft Light or whichever blending mode you prefer in the Blending Mode menu. Then press play to preview the tracking and then repeat the process for any other images that you want to track in. To finish things off, duplicate the original clip, drag it to the top, and mask out any surface obstructions that you don't want the image overlaying on by using the rotor brush tool, which you can learn more about by checking out our rotor brush video in the top right hand corner. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and let us know what other effects you'd like to see us do down in the comments below.